I just wanted to post a quick uh, follow-up to the last uh, video I published now that I've uh, received a reply from Tony Crodet, the alleged uh, FBI special agent that I've never met, that's never uh, interviewed me. And I wanted to talk about uh, a couple things here real quick. I'm making criminal allegations here, and I, wa I wanted to clarify that, okay? Uh, the theft of my family's home and its contents uh, on and before September 27th, 2010 is uh, by the Sheriff's Department and its employees um, covered and concealed by uh, the administrative staff of the Sheriff's Department, including, uh, including what's his name, uh, John Tellis, the undersheriff who took the original uh, complaint and uh, told, told me that I would have to sue him to get uh, any resolution from the matter. And uh, of course the elected uh, county sheriff here in Isabella County, um, Sheriff Leo Metashevsky. I think I'm pronouncing that right. These are criminal allegations, okay? And making false criminal allegations is in fact a crime. And I am accusing and alleging and stating on my own oath and sacred honor that these are the facts, these are the details. There's one thing, um, one thing I need to make clear. If the Sheriff's Department was acting under orders of the court to take our home and our property, there would be a court order. They would be able to uh, produce a document uh, with a judge's signature authorizing their actions. And that document does not exist, or at least it didn't exist before Crodet got involved. This is, this is really important here because I'm, I'm, I'm putting my own liberty and freedom on the line by making these criminal allegations. And um, with the full and complete understanding that if I were making these allegations up or that uh, if there was no truth to the allegations, that I myself would be subject to arrest for false allegations against these, uh, these uh, sworn police officers. And uh, I just wanted to make that clear. Um, folks have felt it necessary. I think uh, most of them have been related to, to the county or to the defendants named in the, in the action against the county. Uh, they want to see. Um, they want to see that uh, the proof that we have that we're making our payments. And you know, I can understand that from from uh, from a certain perspective. But also, uh, the people need to understand that uh, due process and eviction proceedings are court proceedings, and that's where uh, I would have been, should have been allowed to produce the evidence. Uh, to support the fact that uh, an eviction should have never taken place in the first place. Okay, but no eviction ever did take place. There are no court proceedings. Okay, we were not allowed to prepare a defense uh, through due process in the courts in Isabella County. This is very important, okay, because this is, this is part of, uh, this is part of a much, much larger picture. And Tony Crodet's, uh, if that's his real name, his reply to me uh, for, for having posted uh, the previous video, uh, just, you know, just drives home the fact that uh, he's part of the problem. You know, I, I had almost wished that the FBI hadn't been involved or, or that some other FBI was, was involved that uh, might have had some integrity. But I think that uh, what happened in our case is that uh, a special FBI agent was was uh, used to sterilize th this case. But the thing about it is, is that it can't really be sterilized unless they start creating documents. And the documents that they would need to create uh, to alleviate uh, my allegations or to um, somehow prove that the allegations are, are not true would be to create a court order, and, and I wouldn't put it past this county to just arbitrarily create a court order um, that says that we were evicted and, and our property was subject to seizure or something like that. But again, the Isabella County Sheriff's Department stole my family's home 
and its contents. And those are crimes, obviously. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it by calling it corruption. I'm not going to, you know, state it any other way than it is. These are crimes. These are crimes that took place against my family. And when you when you want to try and validate this, um, please understand that my opportunity to prevent or to to present um, the information to support. Um, the fact that we should have never lost our home was skipped entirely. The due process part of, of this whole entire thing was skipped. And one sheriff's department did a, a solid a favor. The police call it a solid. When one officer does a, a favor for another officer, they call it a solid. Um, and that's what happened. Clinton Steiner um, provided a solid for co-worker Shelly Sweet and executed this eviction of my family um, without any court proceedings, no court orders. Okay, the, the documents I talked about earlier that were manufactured by Bruce Havens, a Mount Pleasant lawyer, was simply um, paperwork filed in the federal court that had absolutely no meaning no meaning to the federal court, but the intent of that filing was to produce paperwork that kind of looked like an eviction. So, um, and, and the Sheriff's Department knew that. The, the Deputy Steiner knew that. The Sheriff's Department employs special deputies to handle eviction proceedings, and, and they weren't used in our case. Uh, it was one employee doing a favor for another employee and then covered by uh, uh, everybody in the department, you know. Think about this. If you want to commit the perfect crime, um, work for the sheriff's department, convince your coworkers that, uh, that you need to do whatever you need to do and get them to participate. And once you've involved a percentage of the sheriff's department, you know, documents are going to be produced saying that, you know, everything you did was in the line of your official capacity and that, that, that uh, nothing, nothing was done wrong. One thing I want to point out also is that there is a huge effort today to preserve the public trust, okay? And that's a huge part of the equation. Um, we are only governed by our consent, and, and that's all part of the public trust. When the people understand that their consent to be governed by uh, officials and police that, that uh, don't deserve the public's trust, well, that goes to uh, undermine the entire system, doesn't it? I mean, think about it. If you knew the Isabella County Sheriff's Department was guilty of stealing and that, that its chief judicial terrorist, Paul Chamberlain, uh, saw those allegations and, uh, you know, refused to do his, his judicial duties here in Isabella County, you know, it, this story in and of itself is, is significant enough to upset the county to a point where, you know, everything that these people have done over, over the course of their careers, you know, and we're talking two decades at least, you know, if, uh, if a chief judge can arbitrarily steal from me sitting in the gallery or let his friends off the hook, uh, that include the sheriff's department, you know, wouldn't uh, wouldn't that bring up a reason to uh, relitigate um, if you'd ever been convicted by by Paul Chamberlain or um, found guilty by Paul Chamberlain, convicted by the prosecutors in Isabella County, or arrested by the sheriff's department in Isabella County? That's why my case won't see the light of day. It, it's not it's not so much really about about me as it is um, if the public trust is allowed to be shown for what it is uh, there, there's a much bigger issue here and, and and the obstruction of justice by these same people becomes necessary okay, how do you tr how do you retry two decades uh, of, of court proceedings how do you do that you know, you, you. that's not my problem, okay? That's your problem. That's a problem that uh, these administrators in Isabella County created for themselves. Larry Burdick and his uh, predecessor, 
Risa Skelly, the chief uh, judicial terrorist, Paul Chamberlain. You know, I'm terrorized. Trust me, I'm terrorized. I'm being persecuted and prosecuted because um, doing the right thing here in this case would uh, would essentially demonstrate that the people's trust in this government in Isabella County is completely unfounded, and that that can't be allowed. That can't be allowed to happen. Not because it is the right thing to do, but because of the tsunami tidal effect that would take place afterwards um, by everybody that's uh, had any dealings with any of these clowns throughout the course of their career. You know, Sheriff Leo's on his third term now. He's not for the people. He's not a constitutional sheriff. If he were a constitutional sheriff, the right thing would have been done and my complaint would have been uh, handled and I would have been able to uh, find redress and, uh, and remedy for my injuries. But the specific denial of that is the obstruction of justice. And the obstruction of justice is not about handling me, it's about pre-addressing the forthcoming tsunami that would take place uh, in new litigation after uh, after my claims were legitimized in any way and you know that's the, that's the mountain I'm climbing it's not so much my case really it, it's about everybody that's had any dealings with these terroristic officials you know sheriff's department that can steal your home and its contents um, chief judges that can order um, private security force personnel in the courtroom to steal personal property from you as you as you're trying to peaceably observe the court process you know we're 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 in trouble folks you know again this isn't this isn't about me this isn't about my case this is about the backlash and we're experiencing this on a much more significant le uh, level now with the Michigan Supreme Court. Uh, the Michigan Supreme Court is creating court rules that trap uh, respondent parents in a jurisdiction uh, unlawfully and, and, and with the intent to deprive due process under color of law. This is our Michigan Supreme Court. Our Michigan Supreme Court, by unsigned court order, is overturning uh, Michigan appellate court decisions um, that that uh, rule that um, MERS, M-E-R-S, or Mortgage Electronic Registration Systems, has no standing to foreclose on properties in Michigan. And the Michigan Supreme Court is overturning that with an unsigned order filed by a 90-some-year-old clerk, um, not, not because a, an appeal was granted, but because of the, the backlash or, or the tsunami that would be created of new litigation into our courts. And the Michigan Supreme Court is now practicing the obstruction of justice. And that's not hard to see if you take a look at it. The Michigan Appellate Court ruling that says MERS has no standing to foreclose on properties in Michigan. And then the Michigan Supreme Court immediately overturning that decision because of the tsunami of litigation that it would create. But, but who's being harmed here? Who's, who's being harmed? Michigan homeowners are getting screwed because the Michigan Supreme Court doesn't want any more litigation in the courts? Hmm. So they're going to obstruct justice and screw Michigan homeowners uh, because they don't want more litigation in the courts? Uh, pardon me, you asshats. You cannot obstruct justice just because it makes your job easier. Piss off. You hear me? Piss off. You guys are a bunch of terrorists. Hundreds, if not hundreds of thousands of Michigan homeowners have been screwed out of their property by a company that has no standing to foreclose. You know that. It's common sense. Mortgage Electronic Registration Systems Incorporated. 
does not have interest in the debt, okay? It's a shell game. The banks are securitizing our mortgages, throwing them out there uh, to be publicly traded entities in uh, trusts called REMIX. And uh, at that point, the mortgage ceases to exist. There is no more ability to foreclose on the property. But hey, the Michigan Supreme Court is saying, hey, well, this uh, electronic registration company, you know, still has the note and they've put it back together with the deed. So, you know, don't don't pay too close of attention here, but, um, you know, the banks got paid by the federal government already. They got bailed out and now they're going to take our property too. Crazy, right? The obstruction of justice. The Michigan Supreme Court is practicing the obstruction of justice. And guess what, folks? The Michigan Supreme Court oversees the Judicial Tenure Commission and the Attorney Grievance Commission for self-regulation. Well, if the Michigan Supreme Court is practicing the obstruction of justice, what's that say about our judges? What does that say about accountability? What does that say about everything? All right, I didn't want to make this really long. I just wanted to uh, drive home the point that my allegations are made under under the knowledge that uh, making false criminal complaints and allegations is in fact a crime itself. And at my own risk, at my own uh, potential loss of liberty, I make these allegations, these criminal allegations against the Michigan Supreme Court, against the, uh, against, uh, the county of Isabella. And it's not until you step back and, and see the, the totality of, of what you're actually facing and addressing that you can actually um, logically in your head come up with uh, the reasons and the solutions. You know, people hear about a bad judge or bad cop, or, but they don't see the big picture. It's time we start focusing on the big picture. Okay, the Michigan Supreme Court is responsible for screwing hundreds of, if not hundreds of thousands of Michigan homeowners out of their property and eliminating their possibility of getting it back. See, MERS has been doing this for, I think, almost 15 years or maybe more, somewhere around there. Imagine that. Anybody that's lost their home to MERS over the last 15 years coming back to court? Oh, I lost my house 15 years ago. It's been sold three or four times since then, and my claim stands. MERS didn't have a right to take it in the first place. They did. They sold it. They recapitalized on it again and again, or maybe in some cases. But now the original foreclosure that had anything to do with MERS is subject to litigation. What do we do with all the new, newly displaced homeowners? Okay, if there were a hundred thousand Michiganders that got screwed by MERS, and the Michigan Supreme Court says that's okay because you know all these homes have been resold and we'd have to displace all of those new homeowners. Well, again, that's their problem. This should have never been allowed to happen in the first place. But the courts are ruling for the banks for one reason. They're financially vested, okay? But the obstruction of justice thing by our Michigan's highest court, I say, fuck no, okay? And if you don't like my language, I don't care. This is just wrong on every level. It's time to take a stand, folks. It's, it's time to address the crimes that are taking place every day in our face. Till next time.